Who inspires you in the property industry, Luke St. Clair? Talk to me. It's this way you have all those fancy things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, they've just been on there. Yeah, they've just been on there. <laughs> Um, there's many, many a person, um, and it's not done in a specific order. So you've got people like Josh Vegan. Oh yeah. Um, so met Josh many a time here and in Australia. Uh, John McGrath, uh, who I think is still a, very much an, an inspirational leader, um, uh, and thought processes when it comes to state agency. Why do you think the Australians appear to be better estate agents, or are we just seeing the cream of the cream? Um, like anything, you see, you see, you are seeing the cream of the cream. There are, like anything, if you if you go if you go to a conference here, for example, you are seeing other agents that generally want to get better. Yes. Um, you're not seeing the agents that don't want to get better, the ones that have got a, a shot, shoddy Google review and that kind of thing. They're not bothering to go there. So um, generally, you are seeing the cream of the cream. However, I do believe that they are. I wouldn't say their tech is any better. I think if anything, our tech is more advanced. But what they they still do the basics. So it's about the human contact. So a lot of them, again, the the high performers, and again, if you want to be a high performer, it's about that daily contact. It's about your vendor updates. It's about buyer updates. Again, John McGrath, I listened to one of his um, podcasts on the way over the, this morning, and when he first started out, he had nothing to sell. So what did he do? He served buyers, and those buyers eventually then became sellers. So he was known as the agent that would invest his time and, it, and he still talks about it now. He said buyers are the most underserved parts mm -hmm. of the business. So, uh, so you got John McGraw, you got um, Ang Harrod, Truman. Okay, so she's just moved from her firm to uh, yeah, to Andrews. So first met Ang Harrod. Um, it would have been about six years ago at one of the Sally Lawson okay uh, boot camps because she did that at the time. Um, why does she inspire you? With her energy. I think she's got great, great energy levels, uh, her ideas. So again, at, at the time, uh, again, six years ago, she talked about the little wheel of fortune in terms of team bonding and that kind of thing. So that's something, albeit took me too long to, to implement our end, but I kind of stole stole from her, r and did it. Okay. So, um, and then you got the likes of Ian White, um, and there's always a phrase from Ian that stands out to me is that um, there's still more of a lemon to squeeze. Uh, and I remember him saying that on one of his podcasts or something like that he, he'd done. And, uh, and when agents are talking about opening up a, another branch, it's like, well, okay, what about these branches here? Is there not still more of a lemon to squeeze here before we start having magpie syndrome? There's an awful lot of estate agents that suffer from that. Isn't there? <laughs> there is. Uh, Peter Rollins. Oh, star man. Uh, I think he's absolutely amazing. Obviously. Pistol Pete from Yeah, Foxton's. Pistol Pete from Foxton's. Um, also spent two and a half days at Foxton's as well because I bid it on the agents given thing. And again, he's still got that nickname of Pistol Pete, but he is back there, isn't he? He is, he is. And he stepped in as temporary um, mm. CEO or whatever. What, did, what, what inspires you about Pete? It's the way... It's the language that he uses. Um, it's the passion. Again, energy uh, is, a, is another thing. But just with understand, under, understanding, I love his phrase about finding someone that will shoot the lights out. And those people that will, sh that will shoot those lights out is that they then they need the rewards. They need the work to make them hungrier and hungrier and hungrier. And those people that aren't happy to shoot the lights out, they're fine because you do need people like that. You need, you can't have 10, if you've got 10 negotiators, you can't have all 10 of them wanting to shoot the lights out because it just isn't going to be the right mix uh, for, for that. So, um, so from, so from that, so from that perspective, and again, his daily structure um, and how he had that daily structure at Foxton's. Um, that, Who else after Peter? So you've got, uh, I love David Mintz. 
oh, uh, kerfuffle and obviously ex Normie and, and co. I just think he's got a very, uh, I love his, his sense of humor, uh, but I think he's got a very, very, very mature head and way of looking at things. It's very smart, very yeah. smart man. Yeah, he's a clever cookie. Uh, really, really, really is. Uh, and, and to keep and to keep Simon under control as well. That yeah, yeah. Well, Dave's the star man of that show, isn't he? He is. Really? He's so, an exceptional man. Um, and then if we're staying up north, um, then there's Oliver from Oliver James. Again, I just think with what he does marketing wise, um, again, his his energy for for a state agent, and his pa and he's got a genuine passion, and his passion is to uh, is to be helping customers, and how he gets, and I love the way he goes about doing things. And I know at one point he, as a part time job, he employed the local postman to do things. Well, who better than someone that's delivering letters and know, probably knows everyone down the street or in in that town? And then we've got um, Julian O'Dell. Yes. Um, Again, the business wouldn't be where it is without Julian's training that he gave us. What, 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 what one thing would you recommend Julian for in terms of the way he trains people? Um, or two? Yeah, so we, with, with Julian, it was about questions. Um, and with Julian, it's about service. It, it's a, there isn't, everyone wants this golden bullet or magic bullet, and, and there isn't. A magic bullet, and uh, that's where the prop tech suppliers obviously like to to sell to sell on that we've got this magic silver bullet. Um, with Julian, it was about invest in the service. Um, again, he talked about. I remember a quote that he put up about, which was Sam Walton, the customer's key, central to everything. About asking the right questions, and just this way of delivering training. Uh, again, I think that that's a big, big difference in terms of how people go about it and the engagement he gets from from colleagues star a star trainer absolutely and um, then there's Stephen. um well and, he's a man that doesn't even need his surname so but for <laughs> anyone that's been living in a in a cave Stephen brown yeah so Steve, Stephen brown again i think ge he's just genuinely interested in everyone genuinely genuinely interested nice and, and that doesn't matter if you're engaging with him as a trainer or not uh, and just some of the things that he does outside, whether or not it's his walking football, is his markers for mindfulness, computers for schools thing. Again, ch channeling that kind of negative thing that's happened in his life into something, into something really positive. But he he generally goes out to he to help people, um, and I've never met anyone that's got a bad word to say about him. I would like to say thank you on behalf of the industry, Luke for the inspiration that you give everyone. Oh, thanks. Um, I've had a number of phone calls and messages from people who say that you go out of your way to help them, even at, to the detriment of your own business, helping and guiding, supporting them, jumping in the car, people coming to your branch, sending staff to your branch. And um, I just want to say thank you on behalf of them. I won't embarrass them by their, by their names, but uh, that they wish to say thank you and I wish to say thank you on behalf of the industry for what you do. You are a quietly competent man that gets on with the job. Uh, you're a damn good friend and uh, thank you. It's a pleasure. It's just all about helping people, isn't it?